what I hope to do in this video is a proof of the famous and useful and somewhat elegant and sometimes infamous chain rule. And if you've been following some of the videos on differentiability implies continuity and what happens to a continuous function as our change in x, if x is our independent variable, as that gets down, as that approaches zero, how the change in our function approaches zero, then this proof is actually surprisingly straightforward. So let's just get to it. And this is just one of many proofs of the chain rule. So the chain rule tells us that if y y is a function of u, which is a function of x, and we want to figure out the derivative of this. So we want to differentiate this with respect to x. So we're going to differentiate this with respect to x. We could write this as the derivative of y with respect to x, which is going to be equal to the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. This is what the chain rule tells us. But how do we actually go about proving it? Well, we just have to remind ourselves that the derivative of y with respect to x, the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the limit as delta x approaches 0 of change in y over change in x. Now we can do a little bit of algebraic manipulation here to introduce a change in u. So let's do that. So this is going to be the same thing as the limit as delta x approaches 0. And I'm going to rewrite this part right over here. I'm going to essentially divide and multiply by a change in u. So I could rewrite this as delta y over delta u times delta u times, whoops, times delta u over delta x. Change in y over change in u times change in u over change in x. And you can see this is this is these are just going to be numbers here. So our change in u, this would cancel with that, and you'd be left with change in y over change in x, which is exactly what we had here. So nothing, nothing earth shattering just yet. But what's this going to be equal to? What's this going to be equal to? Well, the limit of the product is the same thing as the product of the limits. So this is going to be the same thing as the limit as delta x approaches 0 of, and I'll color code it, of this stuff, of delta y over delta u times, maybe I'll put parentheses around it, times, times the limit, the limit as delta x approaches 0, delta x approaches 0 of this business. So let me put some parentheses around it. Delta u over delta x. So what does this simplify to? Well, this right over here, this is the definition. And we're assuming, in order for this to even be true, we have to assume that u and y are differentiable at x. So we assume, in order for this to be true, we're assuming, we're assuming y comma u are differentiable are differentiable are differentiable at x. And remember, also if they're differentiable at x, that means they're continuous at x. But if u is differentiable at x, then this limit exists, and this is the derivative of, this is u prime of x, or du dx. So this right over here, we can rewrite as du dx. I think you see where this is going. Now this right over here, just looking at it the way it's written right here, we can't quite yet call this dy du, because this is the limit as delta x approaches 0, not the limit as delta u approaches 0. But we just have to remind ourselves the results from the, a, probably the previous video, depending on how you're watching it, which is if we have a function u that is continuous at a point that as delta x approaches 0, delta u approaches 0. So we can actually rewrite this. We can re we can rewrite this right over here. Instead of saying delta x approaches 0, that's just going to have the effect because u is differentiable at x, which means it's continuous at x. That means that delta u is going to approach 0. As, as our change in x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, our change in u is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So we can rewrite this as our change in u approaches 0. 
And when we rewrite it like that, well, then this is just dy du. This is just dy, the derivative of y, with respect to u. So just like that, if we assume y is and u are differentiable at x, or you could say that y is a function of u, which is a function of x, we've just shown in fairly simple algebra here and using some assumptions about differentiability and continuity that it is indeed the case that the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the derivative of the y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. Hopefully you find that convincing.